Hola. This is Pastor Major Luis Vieira from the Salvation Army. I have a lens to see closer. This is what we're going to be talking about today. Today the issue is why people have so many interpretations about the Bible. Why so many religions in the world? Why so many churches? Have you figured out how many organizations are just in the United States over 3,000, 5,000 organizations, different creed, different uh, doctrine, different kind of interpretations? There is no categorical answer to these questions. I'm going to suggest and multiple uh, solutions or factors that can contribute for all of this diversity. So what I intend to do today is just to give you an introduction of what you're going to be expecting of this series of studies. Thank you for joining me in this journey. And I want to tell you uh, uh, from the bottom of my heart, I'm going to be open my heart. And I'm going to be uh, sharing with you some of the principles that have been in my life uh, during these 45 years of working with the Lord. Uh, here in my bag, you're going to see uh, a graphic of the lens of perception and the frame of reference. Take note, if you want to take note, or uh, you can expand the, the, the screen on your on your device but I'm gonna give you who I am uh, in this uh, um, graphic uh, and I'm gonna use it to answer the question that just I start with the lens of perception what is the lens of perception the lens of perception is how you see things through your lens how you process your thinking, how I see the world, how I see my neighbors, how I see the world, how I see the Bible, how I see others from my perspective, from my perception. So, the lens of perception is shaped for what we call a frame of reference. We all have despised where you're from, who you are, what language. The diversity of who we are, where we come from, we all share this principle. Let's start with the heritage. Heritage is our DNA. Our DNA. You know, studies show that we're going to be uh, with some resemblance of our parents or our siblings, of our uh, grandparents or ancestors. Because we carry on a DNA and we have an heritage uh, that dictate if we are what kind of skin, high we are, color of eyes, sometimes good uh, positive characteristics, sometimes sickness. So we inherit something within my genes. That is something that you cannot do much about it. As I said, I didn't choose to born in Puerto Rico, but I born in Puerto Rico. So I am proud of my root. 
because I know that I know my heritage, who I am, where I come from. So the second aspect in our shape, shaping the way we see things, the perception, is family. You know that every family develop their own books. There is no formula to raise kids. I have three kids. Praise the Lord for them, for my grands. But all of them are so different. And we, I cannot go to the library to, to buy a 12 step to grow kids. Well, they are great books that help us to, to, to improve our, our way, how to talk, how to behave, so and so. But at the end of the day, every family develop that uh, independence, this kind of, well, this is what we do in our family. This is the way we do it. That's the way my father, my mother, my aunt, my grandma, my grandpa, taught me to do things. This is the way I learned it in my house. So we have the factor of heritage. We have our family, that nuclear, immediate family that shape the way we're gonna think, the way we're gonna behave for the rest of our life. This is very important to take in consideration. The third aspect, is environment. You know, as a kid, four, five, six years old, our kid had to go to the nursery, to the daycare, to the elementary school, and start the process of education and formation. So they're gonna be challenged by the teachers, by their peers, by their friend. Oh, this is what your father told you? Oh no, but this is the way it is. So environment, influence the way we behave when we are in our formation, in the way that we are shaping, the way we think things. That's very important that we as parents, we as brothers, we as sons and daughters could take advantage of the best of the education in our family, in our environment, our school, and be with the good crowd. That's important. But this is the, I think one of the crucial component, the four ones, cognoscity, or cognitive, I'm sorry, cognitive. Uh, you're gonna see that sometime my first language is Spanish. And let me make a parenthesis here. The reason that I am doing this in English not because I master the English, I don't pretend to master the English, no. But I am ministered to an Anglo church speaking, English speaking constituency, and I want for them to, to hear what I'm saying, and uh, also in my community that they can also appreciate uh, in the context where I am working, my sharing with them of what I have to say. So, uh, sometimes I'm going to be saying things in Spanish and uh, for my friends, uh, ministers, uh, co-workers in the ministry, friends in the members, soldiers, and all the people that I know in Puerto Rico, United States, South America, Central America. Uh, the good thing with me is that when I speak in English, it won't sound that I speak in Spanish. That's a good advance. So, anyway, let's go back to the fourth point. Cognoscitive or cognitive. Cognitive. The cognitive is one of the most important aspects in our formation so we can develop our lens of perception because that's going to dictate who really we are. Who really the way we think, the way we process things. And the cognitive depends on so many factors. The way that you grew up in your heritage, family, environment, the capacity 
and the discipline that you put into your studies so you become a person knowledgeable, a person who know what you know. There are people who don't live out of this box because their life has been just in this frame of reference that they had no other experience with other cultures, other languages, other foods, other theologies, other lifestyle that exists in the world today and by generation through history has been in civilization, in place. And the good thing is that God, in his omniscient, in his historical providence with man during this development of history, God deal with every human individually. Despise how we think, how we see things through with our limitation. Cognitive. The level of your culture, and when I say culture, is how much you study uh, other culture, how much you study your own history, how much you know about languages, how much you know about the Bible, how much you know about other things. That cognitive understanding to process information, to evaluate, to be open, because this is what it's all about. I believe in life, and I hope that this is helpful. Why people have so many interpretations about the Bible? We have to say, yes, the Bible, as 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 said, all scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach. This is what we believe. We believe in the Bible. Why so many interpretations? Is there is just one God? Possible factor in the multiple factor? The lens of perception. There are many ways that we process information. If you preach one sermon here in this context, in the United States, probably that doesn't mean that that's going to be accepted in Europe or in Africa or in Pacific Island or in South Central America because people have different perceptions. They see things through a different lens. And that made many interpretations. And that's why people decide to pick what is better for them. Just this is an introduction. I don't want to make it too long. But follow me in the YouTube channel. I'm going to, sorry, you have any uh, feedback, let me know. Write to me and see you next chapter. God bless you.